So very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Megan. Now, welcome to the second day of a CAEV Expo 2023. We hope you had a great uh, first day filled with valuable insights and networking opportunity. Let's kick off the day two of a CAEV Expo 2023 with our opening session, which is focused on India's connected electric and autonomous shift a roadmap to mass adoption. So without further ado, let's get started with our opening session. Our first speaker for the day is Mr. Surinder Kanan, a Vice President of Sales APAC and Japan at Cavalry Wireless. Let's welcome him with a round of applause once again, please. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is uh, Surinder, and I uh, represent Cavalry Wireless. Uh, I would like to start this session uh, with a very, very short and brief introduction about uh, Cavalry Wireless. Uh, as I guess it kind of uh, uh, you know, helps to get a perspective of where we come from and uh, what we do. So Cavalry Wireless is incorporated in, uh, in US, and, uh, but we have our uh, uh, global R&D based out of uh, India. Our entire manufacturing is also based out of India. Uh, we, uh, we design, develop, and manufacture connectivity modules, to be specific, cellular connectivity modules, which power automotive use cases. So we are an enabler of uh, uh, connectivity for the mobility industry. So with this very short, is it echoing? OK. With this uh, very short introduction, let me get started. OK, future of mobility is connectivity. Uh, before we get into the future of mobility, let us look at the mega trends that is impacting the industry today. In my opinion, the best way to uh, describe the trends would be using the acronym CASE, which stands for Connectivity, uh, Autonomous Vehicles, Shared Mobility, and uh, Electrification. Okay. Dynamic trends in connectivity and uh, technologies have been transforming the automotive industry. And uh, technologies such as uh, autonomous driver assistance systems, 5G, artificial intelligence, and the increasing reach of uh, V2X, vehicle to everything infrastructure, have been pushing the uh, mobility industry into an autonomous driving functionality. On the other hand, we have innovations in um, uh, uh, smart mobility in uh, connectivity, which have been working towards achieving two overarching goals. One is enhancing the uh, user experience, and the other is to improve what is good for the society. So from an uh, user experience perspective, uh, customers have been demanding for more advanced navigation, more personalized in-vehicle infotainment services, over the air updates, uh, more preventive maintenance, so on and so forth. And uh, from the perspective of what is good for the society, technologies have been striving for uh, uh, reducing the carbon emission, increasing the uh, road safety, etc. So these trends are, in a way, interconnected. What I mean by that is uh, the shared mobility platforms will use both uh, autonomous vehicles as well as the uh, electric vehicles. A lot of these electric vehicles will have autonomous uh, functionality. Similarly, autonomous vehicles will, have, will be running on, um, on electric. But what is uh, peculiar or what is uh, the highlight here is all these trends uh, rely heavily on connectivity. Connectivity essentially places uh, the vehicles as nodes upon the Internet of Things. Today, a vehicle is a, a service delivery platform as much as it's used for uh, transportation and travel. So uh, I think let me start with an interplay of connectivity with the various strengths. And let's look at autonomous vehicles to start with. Yeah. So autonomous vehicles have been uh, promising to revolutionize the way we are going to travel. Uh, if you look from a sales perspective also as well, the kind of uh, revenue that is expected from autonomous vehicles by turn of this decade is anywhere between 300 to 500 
billion dollars. That's the kind of size of autonomous vehicles that we are discussing. And the other significant benefit of autonomous vehicles is it's, it's kind of uh, promising to enhance the uh, road safety by several orders of magnitude. And by 2040, the number of autonomous vehicles on the road is likely to be around 80% uh, of what, what the number of vehicles we have today. That's the kind of impact that autonomous vehicles is going to have on the mobility industry, be it from a technological perspective or from, a, uh, from the commercial or uh, business perspective, as well as from what's good for the society. Now, let's see how autonomous vehicles will, uh, will depend on connectivity. I have three use cases to illustrate my point. Let's start with uh, V2X, vehicle to everything. It's quite uh, intuitive to imagine that uh, autonomous vehicles will be relying heavily on uh, uh, V2X infrastructure to get an understanding of the sense of what the obstacles in the road are, or what are the uh, challenges they're going to face in the road. So autonomous vehicles will receive a lot of data from uh, other vehicles, from the infrastructure, from even the pedestrians. And this data would be used with autonomous vehicles to coordinate with the other objects in the V2X ecosystem for them to ensure a collision-free environment. So this is what we call uh, vehicle platooning. And so V2X connectivity is extremely essential for autonomous vehicles to take critical decisions. From the point of view of uh, development and benchmarking, the data from autonomous vehicles, or rather even the uh, connected vehicles, or for that matter, even the shared, uh, the existing uh, uh, traditional vehicles on the road, uh, helps to uh, serve the development and uh, improvement with regard to the uh, future of autonomous technologies. Like data when presented in the form of uh, the, uh, the vehicle specifics, the, uh, the traffic pattern, all these work towards powering the algorithms of, artifi of the uh, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning towards improving the technologies of autonomous vehicles. From the point of view of data production and connectivity, we all know that autonomous vehicles use a lot of data. To be precise, they use around four terabytes of uh, data on an everyday basis. And this data is generated from various sensors like cameras, lidars, uh, radars. And this data needs to be communicated to the various objects in the ecosystem. And this data also needs to be sent to the cloud for processing. So I think it's very fair to summarize the interplay as autonomous vehicles will rely very extensively on robust data connectivity for very long hours, possibly even in very harsh environments to ensure fail-safe operations of the vehicles. I would like to move next to shared mobility, the next big trend. The um, shared mobility is making a big splash in the recent years, especially after the success of companies like uh, uh, Uber and Lyft. And uh, today, all the services that you see on the screen, the car sharing, the bike sharing, are all something which is very common. We use it on an everyday basis. And possibly because of this, the shared mobility economy is performing exceptionally well. As per reports, it's around $100 billion globally today. And it is expected that by the turn of this decade, it should be around uh, $300 to $400 billion, as much as what the autonomous vehicle revenue would be. And the other benefit of uh, shared mobility is that you will have much lesser private vehicles on the road which by itself would add to a lot of uh, societal good, like more productive commutes, uh, much lesser pollution, maybe much lesser vehicles on the road. So let us look at the in, uh, interaction of, uh, of connectivity with the shared mobility. Now, shared mobility by itself is a very vast uh, ecosystem which is powered by automotive connectivity. The first use case I would like to discuss here is about the fleet connectivity. Now, a lot of fleet owners would uh, take up to connectivity to track the vehicles and with the success of uh, more of the shared mobility platforms you'll have more of them taking up to connectivity but they're not going to stop with uh, just tracking the vehicles they are going to use the data from the vehicle to kind of uh, understand more insights about uh, how to uh, reduce the fuel consumption what better routes to take how to ensure more optimized uh, maintenance so on and so forth 
Similarly, the routing and navigation data. The routing and navigation data also too very critical for the players across the shared mobility uh, spectrum. So here again, data presented as insights in terms of the uh, road conditions, whether the road is blocked because of an accident or something else, or various other insights would uh, help the shared mobility customers to take very informed decisions as they go about ferrying their passengers and picking up their rides. And um, the last use case I have with, particular, with regard to the shared mobility trend is the innovative insurance. As the number of the private vehicles on the road would reduce, so would be the revenue loss for the insurance companies. So these insurance companies would try to come back with more innovative insurance policies, such as uh, usage-based insurance. And uh, once these shared mobility customers who, pick, who kind of subscribe to this insurance only for the duration of the specific drive, the insurance companies have to take up to connectivity to kind of uh, track these vehicles, uh, understand the driver behavior, assess the safety risks, and thereby calculate the premium for these, uh, for these uh, insurances. So this kind of takes me to the last trend, which is about electrification or electric vehicles. So electric vehicle, uh, like shared mobility, is also here to stay. Uh, the proof is the fact that the month-on-month -month and year-on-year uh, -year sales growth that we see of electric vehicles. I read recently last week that uh, in India, uh, around 1 million electric vehicles have been uh, already deployed. It's already a billion-dollar industry in India. And by, again, turn of this century, by the end of this decade, around 2030, we should be having around 30 to 40 percent um, uh, electric vehicles on the road. Plus, there's the entire government machinery which is behind it, which obviously is doing it for uh, ensuring the positive influence on the climate change, reducing the dependence on fossil fuel, so on and so forth. So, as autonomous uh, vehicles are revolutionizing the uh, way we travel, I guess electric vehicles would go one step further and even revolutionize the way we are going to lead our lives in a more healthy fashion and our um, economy in a more healthy manner. So when I look at the interplay of uh, connectivity with uh, the uh, electric vehicles, I have uh, you know shortlisted four use cases. I'll start with um, the OEM performance tracking. Whatever said and done, the electric vehicles are still in, uh, in the nascent stage. The technology of electric vehicles are still in the pretty nascent stage. And the uh, R&D engineers and EV companies are be very keen to track the performance of these vehicles to understand uh, any bugs or any improvement points based on which they can keep improving the technology, for which they have to rely and take up to connectivity as well. The second use case I have is with regard to the uh, charging infrastructure planning. It is the data from the electric vehicles which would come in handy to, for, the, uh, for these companies to kind of assess and determine the demand for charging stations. The location intelligence which comes from uh, the historical traffic data would throw up a lot of insights with regard to the, uh, the driver behavior and the, where the EV drivers are. Uh, which, which uh, you know, uh, places they are going, at which point the, uh, the battery is starting to drain. And all this information would kind, kind of come in handy to ensure the de demand for electric vehicles and demand for the charging stations and where they have to be deployed. The third use case is about simplified trip planning. So one of the biggest challenges with regard to the electric vehicles as of today is the range anxiety. So I'm sure there'll be quite a few business cases which is going to come up quite soon uh, to address this anxiety. And uh, what would happen is these uh, AI-enabled solutions would power the uh, services to overcome these challenges by utilizing uh, various vehicle data, such as the uh, uh, location of the vehicle, the uh, residual charge in the, uh, in the vehicle, the destination to the, uh, the the balanced, balanced distance to the destination, the temperature conditions, the uh, road conditions, and all this will be used by the AI-enabled solutions to come up with various um, recommendations to the driver on where they can go and uh, charge their vehicle and what's the best uh, route to reach their destination. And uh, finally, the policy updates. So like how the insurance companies have been dropping their uh, 
uh, their uh, revenue because of lower uh, private vehicles on the road. With the uh, drop of sales of petrol and diesel, I'm sure the revenue from for the tax agencies will also drop. So to overcome this, I understand that a lot of countries and governments are already assessing the ways of uh, taxing the electric vehicles. And uh, vehicle miles traveled is one of the uh, key areas, which key uh, attributes uh, which they are considering to use for taxing vehicles, which is also a very accurate data which is going to come from the uh, electric vehicle as well. So uh, with this, I think, uh, I think what, what is quite clear is that uh, there are quite a few enablers in the, uh, in the connected vehicle ecosystem, and connectivity provides, a, provides something for, for almost all the enablers, enablers in the connected vehicle ecosystem. It provides something for the government, it provides some attributes for the insurance companies, some attributes for the OEMs, some attributes for the fleet owners, and all these uh, enablers would come together and uh, leverage connectivity, uh, leverage connectivity for enhancing their bottom line and thereby push the uh, engine of the automotive industry forward. So at this context, I would like to draw your attention to uh, three, uh, three enablers which are connectivity related, purely connectivity related. In Cavley, we call them the uh, building blocks of automotive connectivity. The first one is the connected module with the integrated eSIM. So this connected module is something which sits in the uh, uh, telematics control unit or the vehicle control unit of the, uh, of the vehicle and transmits data to power many IoT use cases. Now this comes in various flavors depending upon, uh, for example, which network type are you in. You know, today 4G is very popular. 5G is just around the corner. Maybe very soon we'll also have 6G based uh, modules. And then it also depends upon uh, what kind of complementing technologies you would require. Like complementing technologies could be GSS, GPS, the positioning technologies, or cellular V2X kind of uh, technologies in case it's required for the autonomous uh, vehicles. Similarly, the human machine interface. Like in case you need a phone kind of a human machine interface, then you take up to Android or you look at Linux or ThreadX. And finally, the various interfaces that is required. So typically these modems come with interfaces to the canvas, interfaces to the uh, display, interfaces to the camera, so on and so forth. The second is the vast telecom providers network. And then finally is the connectivity management platform. In many cases, the connectivity management platform is the unsung hero because not a single operator would be able to assure connectivity to the vehicle wherever it goes. So it's the connectivity management platform's responsibility to be the critical link between the vehicle, uh, the uh, telecom network, and the various services that ride on the te telecom network which power the automotive use cases. And uh, it's a connectivity management platform which uh, does this by switching the profile of the operators and ensure the best connectivity is always available for the vehicle. So uh, I would, this is my last slide. I would like to uh, uh, provide you a complete comprehensive set of uh, the Cavley uh, portfolio. The good thing is we have all the three critical connectivity blocks in our portfolio. We have a wide range of modules and um, we have a connectivity management uh, platform, it's called Hubble, and we have tied up with around seven global tier one operators where we can provide connectivity in around 160 countries. So with this, I would like to conclude. Thanks a lot for your time, and I'll appreciate if you can drop by by your booth. We are at uh, uh, ZC88, and uh, we can continue our discussion over there. Thank you. <laughs>